Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? If you remember last time, I had the K700 hopelessly stuck. And in the end, I ran out of fuel and everything else that went with it. So I decided that I would um, rescue it and I brought it back to the garage. Now, unfortunately, that means that we've lost the load that we had on it. So everything we did last time was kind of pointless. But I still feel that it was worth the effort. We had a lot of fun doing it and... Um, we've learned a few things along the way. So we've we've done a couple of episodes with the K700 with the Kirovitz tractor. So this episode, I'm going to use this vehicle right here, which is... Does it actually tell me what it is when I'm in it? I think I have to go to the map. And yeah, we are in the A469. Now, this looks a bit like a Land Rover. I don't think it is actually a proper Land Rover. Um, I think it's something else. But it looks good enough to me. It, look, it looks close enough to a Land Rover for... Um, for me so yeah I'm, I'm just going to refer to it as a Land Rover from here on in and this will probably upset a lot of people because I don't think it's actually a Land Rover so I was thinking that first of all today we would try to get to the points on the map that well, I'm gonna go for all wheels a minute actually I'm gonna go for all wheels and diff lock just go for the whole thing Um, I was kinda hoping to uncover the areas on the map that are currently covered up so you know um, with the, the cloaking devices. If I can find each of those, we can get them uncovered and that's going to make life a little bit easier. And then I'd like to go and get the eight-wheel drive monster from the top of the map and I'd like to use that one to hopefully move some logs around. So that is kind of my plan. Whether we're going to, how much of it we're going to get through, I don't know, but we'll get through as much as we can. The release of the game is imminent. It's very, very soon. So I've got an episode for today, which is Sunday. Well, I'm actually recording this uh, yesterday. So I'm, um, yeah, it's, it's like a time machine. This is. <laughs> I'm recording this on Saturday and it is for release on Sunday. So you should have already had my time lapse and you should now have this one in the middle of the afternoon. There'll be Gold Rush still to come on the channel later. And I'm also hoping, if I have time, to get another episode of this out for tomorrow, for Monday, and there'll be something else for you to watch on Monday, as I normally own... I normally... Monday's the day that I get less episodes done than any other day. So I'm hoping that this week we will get an extra spin tyres up, just to sort of um, prep you for the release, and then it's being released on Tuesday, isn't it? So... Um, and then hopefully you will all be able to get hold of it and you can start enjoying it for yourself. I'm having so much fun playing this game. It really is a lot of fun. I love the the graphics and the, the mud effect. Now, a few people have said they don't particularly like the, the way the mud is done on the tyres and um, they prefer actually the old version of it, which is fair enough. Um, not everybody's going to want like exactly the same thing I personally I quite like it. I mean I do agree that the the mud on the tires does look a little bit peculiar compared to everything else but I really like the overall effect of this game and there's there's a lot in it that I'm really really pleased with and I like for example carrying little bits of shrubbery around on the back of your vehicle that's absolutely brilliant you can also there's like challenges and things there's multiplayer is going to be available I haven't looked at the challenges. I decided I wasn't going to look at those just yet. I might look at them a bit later. I don't know. Um, this game is almost certainly going to be played one episode per week for the foreseeable future. I'm just not quite sure what day of the week I'll be doing it. Um, we'll, we'll sort of wait and see on that point and where I can squeeze it in. Pro quite possibly this will be Sunday. I'll, I'll do this on a Sunday and um, to sort of go in between, um, well, currently, just after the time lapse and before Gold Rush comes out. But how much longer we're going to be doing Gold Rush seven days a week, I'm not quite sure yet. That remains to be seen. I just took damage. I barely hit anything. And I still took 27 points of damage. I mean, I've still got 300 and we're not playing on hard mode. And if you're playing on hard mode, as soon as you take damage, your vehicle starts to suffer for it you, you the performance of the vehicle starts to suffer things start to get more difficult to do and that's one cool aspect of the hard mode that i particularly like the sound of i haven't actually tried hard mode yet mainly because um i just wanted to be able to like explore the map without worrying about um my really really bad driving holding things up so let me go over here we've got three watch points to uncover i got a short log trailer there in the middle of the trees but remember i got absolutely hopelessly stuck in the trees and 
Yeah, all because I went the wrong way. I went up there and started going across that way. Instead, I should have gone this way. I should have stuck with that bit of road there and tried to head this way. Um, but I didn't, so, you know, I've now paid the price. You can learn from my mistakes, I'm hoping. I want to go there. That's, that's my target. How we actually get there, I'm not quite sure. I'm going to, at the moment, just keep following the road that we're on. And now I don't actually know where the road is. Uh, well, we've got all-wheel drive and we've got um, the diff lock on. Let me just move that camera a bit, if I can. Sort of go like that, maybe. There. Right. We've got a very marshy area here. How much of this we can... Whether or not this is the right way to go, I don't really know. I'm kind of hoping it is. I, I got a feeling it's not, though. I got a feeling that we should have gone left just up there instead of coming down this way and trying to drive through all this area that's covered in bulrushes. Oh, no. No, it's right there. Excellent. We've actually gone the right way. <laughs> Look at all the stuff that's gathering on the back of the, um, the Land Rover. That's absolutely brilliant. That's a really cool effect, that is. And I'm stuck already. It does kind of hold us back a little bit having using the... Right, there's one bit of the navigation map revealed. Um, doing it automatic rather than manually changing the gears does have an effect. But it's not holding us back all that much, I don't think. Right then, we've got a watch point here, which I think we would access from that side rather than this side. And where would we go then? I don't think that we'd be able to get through this area very easily. I think really we want to keep following the road north and get to that watch point there. So I literally, I think we just want to stay on this road. We'll follow this one around here and we'll keep going straight. Uh, we'll avoid trying to go through there. We'll go straight across this bit here and here, I'm hoping, and keep going up this way so that we can get to that watch point. And then the, the other watch point over here, I think we need to get it from the other way. So maybe we'll use the eight-wheel drive vehicle to get that bit. I'm not sure yet. So let's come on round and... I want to keep the diff lock off as much as possible because I think that's going to, um, it burns through the fuel faster. So we, we've got to, I mean, this thing's not going to drink fuel at a tremendous rate, not compared to some vehicles. And we've got, and it will also, we, we can go full with this one, whereas some of the other vehicles, it doesn't let us fill it up completely at the garage. You do actually have to wait. Right, it was straight we wanted to go here, wasn't it? Not um, going round. And we don't want to go through that water. We want to go... That, that's the way we want to go. We want to go straight across here as well. If I can. I think I might need the diff lock to get through this little bit here. Nope. Nope, it's working. We can get up through. Uh, no, okay, maybe not. Let's try the diff lock going up this little hill. And we'll stick with this road along here. We've got quite a long way to go, I think, on the roads. And so we shouldn't have too much cross-country manoeuvring. This is... Right, now it's going to start getting difficult. If I can stay up on this side... Some of the bigger vehicles, you can, like, go through the mud a lot easier. But this tiny little Land Rover here, it's it's not going to get through it quite so easily. Oh, oh dear, we've got a bridge. Right, now we do have to be careful. Because it's entirely possible to fall off of bridges and roll your vehicle over. You can easily tip the vehicle over if you're not being careful. And then that's it. It's kind of it's it's game over. Once you've once you've tipped your vehicle over, game over. You've then got to reset it to a garage. You've got no other choice, unless you're playing on hard mode, in which case you can't reset it to a garage. So if you drive all of your vehicles and get them hopelessly stuck behind the trees, like I did last time, um, you're kind of stuck. Really, there's not a lot you can do to rescue yourself because, yeah, you you, you don't have that like artificial reset option. You've got to go and take another vehicle out and pull it out of the trees or the bushes or however you want to do it. And I don't know if there's anything big enough that will actually drive over and like crush the biggest trees on the map. I mean, I really hope that there would be, but that doesn't necessarily mean there is. Oh, I can see the next waypoint just up there. If I take the diff lock off a minute, am I able to get enough speed to keep moving? There's the flag thing. I just want to go up past these couple of trees and then I can get off the side onto the grass. There we go. Drive close to the watch point and we have another one unlocked. Excellent. Right, now let's take a look at the map and see what we've got. So we've got one watch point down here. 
And we've... Oh, no, we've got... So this... Literally, that's the only one left. So we've got a garage just here, which is locked. It needs four garage points and a fuel station. There's the short log trailer that we lost. And we should have come up through this way. There's the road that we should have gone. And we went up that way and in through here. So, yeah, we, we did completely do that wrong. Um... But now, the next bit, where can we go? We've just come up along this road here. So if we come back this way, now that would take us around, it would kind of run through that bit, but if we came up to the garage there and we run down this way, is that going to take us through? It looks like there's a bit of a road, well, there's a road there. It looks like there's a road going through there. Some more trees. I reckon that we just kind of need to head down through that opening in the trees there. And then we've got to get... This is going to be the difficult bit to traverse right here, but I think we can get through. And then we can get to this watch point. So we'll worry about that in a minute. We want to get to that garage first. That's our, that's our next target, is to get to that garage. I'll tell you what, I will just go in here in a second. If I can get round. Right. Let's go to the... i go like that. There, click to activate. Now, if you... Uh, somebody did suggest scrolling out. If you scroll out with your mouse wheel, um, you'd be able to zoom back out of the cockpit camera. No, you can't. It doesn't actually work. You, it's not possible to do it like that. You've got to press one or two um, to um, move it out. I mean, I, actually, the cockpit camera on this vehicle is not too bad. I this one this one seems to be all right. Let's put the diff lock back on. We come up here. So we've. We've unlocked the access to the garage, but we haven't got any points to the garage in order to do anything with it. So let's just stop there a moment. I'm going to go number one. Uh, more garage points required to access the garage. And if I press F1, there's... Well, there's a fuel station right next door. There's no other vehicles up here. So the next bit that we want to do is we want to head out that way. It's actually from that point up there by the fuel station. So we go to the fuel station first, and we should be able to get there. We just zoom back out a little bit. So there's the fuel station, which is easy enough to find. And once you get through there, if you just stop there, it will completely refuel your vehicle. Once you get into it, stop there. Right, 13 litres truck automatically refueled. So we've got as much fuel as we can carry. And now we just head along this track here. Now this is where we wanted to come up with the Kirovitz last time, but we weren't able to do it. And... Now we're getting to the point where I want to... No, this is the clearing down through the trees. This is the bit that I wanted to get to. So I'll take the diff lock off a minute. This is definitely a piece that I wanted to come through last time. And we get up to the brow of the hill here. And now this is the difficult bit, I think. Right, we're here. We need to get down to this point down here. So that's where I want to go. I need to try to find a way through the trees and everything to get down here so then I can move on to the watchtower. I want to go to there and then I want to get to the end of the road there and then over to there, I think. And then we can see about heading south down to that watchtower. So how do we do this? If I move that round, which way do I want to go? I need to kind of get through there. So if I... We just look at the map a moment. If I go down that way, oh, I'm heading into this piece here, aren't I? I think I think that we can do it. I think that we can go down into that point there. You bring that camera. Oh, I'll bring camera around like that. That might be a little bit easier there, I think. Help me see where the front wheels are going. And if I can see where the front wheels are going, it's going to be a lot easier to sort of help get me around. Okay, so we can go, there's a, there's a bit of a track here, and, right, I want to get through the trees this way, there, and, right, whoa, i got to have to be a little bit careful coming through, but I think it's still going to work, if I can, there we go, come through there, and... Ease it round. That's it. I don't. I don't want to um, get too excited on any of the corners because I need to kind of get up there. I'm heading down towards a road. I wanted to go up that way. So which is the best way to do it? This camera is going crazy now. I need to lock it in place. There. Right. Let's try that. Uh, maybe if I go round these trees, if I go round over this way, 
bring it round that way and there's a whole load of trees knocked down which means I'm going to struggle to get across them with this little vehicle we've also got a whole load of boulders in the way which again is going to make life difficult for me because I got I mean the short wheelbase is really really useful on this but the um, being lower to the ground and the smaller wheels than a lot of things is going to quite possibly subject me to damage that bigger vehicles wouldn't necessarily pick up but we're getting through it excellent okay we've actually done that really really well i'm quite pleased with that plus i haven't had to engage diff lock either and i'm, I'm taking that as like a, a person you know a, a good thing for myself that i haven't had to engage the diff lock because um Engaging the diff lock means that you've encountered something that you weren't able to take on without it. And so I kind of like the challenge of not engaging the diff lock at all, if I could do that. But I don't think I can do that. I think I am going to have to give in and engage that diff lock every now and then. But certainly if I was over on the road, but at the moment, by avoiding driving on that little road, I'm doing all right. And now we've sort of reached the open territory. Now, this is where I marked myself to in order to get the next bit and it's just open grass at the moment let's go for it four wheel drive off we're just two wheel drive right the way across here and we'll get hopelessly stuck of course we will okay let's get the four wheel drive in and we can at least start moving okay this is absolutely fantastic i mean yes it's a little bit dull but it's starting to get it is heading towards night time now and there's well there's water over there we've got like a flat area of water where do we actually want to go oh no we need to go all the way over this way right u2 okay i don't know why it's u2 rather than just u and i don't know what that area is there so we've got this nice open grassland there is water here somewhere so we may have to do some traversing around this water but i think generally we should be okay we should be able to go oh no it's just right there i can see the actual watchtower right from here i can actually see it but it's boggy we have a bog going on right here which we're going to get stuck in if we're not careful if i come up onto the top a little bit let's try stopping here and what i want to do oh no we can't actually skip the night yet because it's not officially night i was hoping that if i could skip the night it would like make it a little bit um brighter around here because it's start, it starting to it ooh, whoa i took a massive amount of damage there okay so racing across the grassland is not necessarily the best idea because it is possible to get damaged well there is something that i'm going to be doing in just a moment i'm going to find out what we can do with this vehicle and what that water in there is going to do to this vehicle as well so we've got all of the watch points as soon as we get to here all of the watch points will be unlocked on there we go explore the bog achievement unlocked explore the bog we've done all of them that is absolutely fantastic so we've got everything unlocked now and let me just move down here so we've got a big lake in the middle there so there's the road that comes into the side and looking at it it's actually going to be quite easy to traverse across this bog area here without too much difficulty you've got a log station logs kiosk right there which uh you've also got up here it's the d535 i think that i want um i think that's the one the d535 which is the the one with the eight wheel drive on it that's the one that i'm really looking forward to using i need to get that down to the garage and then we want to get deliveries to the lumber mill so i may as well oh no i got to get it to the garage first so once i've gotten that one to the garage then i can go to the log station We've got a garage up there. We've got a log station here with a log kiosk at it. And that one is log station log kiosk. Uh, is there another one like that? Nope, that's all of them. And we've got the B131 here. Now, I realise that I drove round that one. I didn't actually unlock it last time. Some people got a little bit frustrated at the fact that I ignored that one. So maybe I will go back and take a look at that one shortly. But before we do that... Let's go and see what we can do with this Land Rover a minute. There's an idea that I have had that I would like to see what we can do. So I'm going to put the diff lock in. Okay, so it's, it's actually really, really muddy out here on this grass. I didn't think it would be this muddy. Um, which means I'm not going to really be able to do what I wanted to do. I might be able to sort of if I can just get up over this hill. Okay, go on. Go on. 
come out of the mud, just go a little bit faster. I, I just want to get a bit of a run up. There we go. On, off, off the mud, off the mud. Uh, I was hoping to actually have something a bit more impressive than that. I was hoping to get right into the lake. What's that noise? I think I can hear ducks. Have I gone below? Water damage. How far in? <laughs> I want to see how far into this lake we can go before we absolutely destroy this thing and it grinds to a complete halt. We're almost up to the roof. It's taking damage fast now. We're not going to... I don't think we've... No, I think we've now reached a point where we would not be able to get out of the lake, even if we wanted to. But no, I'm determined to just keep going until it's completely and utterly destroyed it. It's actually climbing out of the lake a little bit. In which case, we're going to need to go somewhere a little bit deeper. Now, which is lights on it? Oh, headlights. There we go. I'm lighting up underneath the water. If I just park right here, it's just going to keep um, hitting it. 231. <laughs> okay, it's ducks that I can hear in the background. It's start now we're starting to take some serious damage. We're getting it's, it's a little bit deeper over here. <laughs> At twelve, it's it, we're all, and there we go. Recover with add-ons or recover in garage. That is it. Our Land Rover has come to an untimely end, and that is the end of it. Um, it's very peaceful here. Well, I mean, it's not that peaceful. I'll tell you what. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to go and skip the night. So we do that. Yes. Why is it going to drain fuel? I mean, the engine's not running. The engine's not running at all. That makes no sense. And it's morning. And what a beautiful sunrise that is as well. I mean, yes, we are kind of sat in the water. But that is... Ignore the screaming ducks. That is um, it's very serene and beautiful. It really is. Oh, well. Serene and beautiful is wonderful and all, but um, we don't actually want that at the moment. What we're going to do is we're going to jump over to C375 over here. And I will start this engine. There we go. And I'm going to go and get that other vehicle. I'm going to get it unlocked so that you can take a look at it. And then the next task is the... Um, the eight-wheel drive machine. I want it. This is the B131. It's right there. So I will go and get that one and I'll unlock it for you. And then we're going to go and get the eight-wheel drive beastie. We're going to get that one back to a garage. Eight damage. And yes, I'm the same as you guys. I absolutely love looking at the fluid dynamics in the vehicles as you drive around. Right, so we got that one right there. I'm just going to stop you here and go advanced, stop engine. Change truck, B131, there we go. I uh, didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that either. I want to do that, there we go. Right, move round. It's very similar to the other one. It's just got this uh, piece on the back. I think this one can actually load up with logs. So let's start, you, start it up. I love the look of the engine inside. I mean, the, the graphics that they've done with some of this stuff is absolutely brilliant. It, it's genuinely beautiful. We've got a whole load of pumpkins over here as well. There's the pumpkins. Let's get smashing some pumpkins. I remember seeing this on the, um, the trailer on Facebook. It looks beautiful, smashing of the pumpkins. Although I haven't seen very many pumpkins around. There's one there. Oh, yep. So we've smashed pumpkins. We can at least say that we have smashed pumpkins. I'll bring that back round again. I want to do that again. See if I can get a few more. I don't think there is very many more pumpkins around, but we've at least got these. Oop. Kind of wanted to... Uh, there we go. If I can just do that. <laughs> it doesn't want to get over them. Excellent. Right. I've smashed some pumpkins for you, and I don't really want to do very much with this particular vehicle. I've started it, and I've accessed it so that you can sort of see it. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to um, just stop that one a moment. If I put the handbrake on and then advanced stop engine. Slows down. And we want to go all the way up to the top end of the map. And it is the D535, I think. That we yes, that's the one. That's the beastie. Look at it. Feast your eyes, ladies and gentlemen. That is an absolute beauty. A 
beauty of a machine. Okay, let me um, move around a little bit. Right, what are we going to do with this one? Uh, cockpit camera there. We want to get this one all the way down to the garage so that we can get something on the back of it that will carry logs. So that's the kind of the, the first thing that we want to do. We can do diff lock is always on with this one. And we've got all wheel drive or just as it is. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is move it somewhere. Where do we want to? We need to get it down to the garage. I'm kind of thinking I'd like to drive it. I'm going to start driving it for the rest of this episode. I think that we will first take it to the fuel station over here. And from there, where would be the best place to go? Can we get through here? Sure, yeah, I think we will. I think we'll go to the fuel station there. And then we'll go like this. We'll travel all the way around here. Um, actually, I need to okay that. That's mountains there. I don't think I can get through that bit. I can get through up here. And that will bring me out. I wanted to try and get across this area here. I want to see what that's like. In which case, in order to get through there properly, really, we want to go along this road up to here and then start heading south down there and all the way down this way and keep going here. Uh, we don't want to go through that water, do we? No, we want to go over that way. Actually, I'll put it there and then I'll put it there. Right. That's the way that we're going to go. That's that's our preferred route. So we'll stick all-wheel drive on just because, well, eight-wheel drive is better than four-wheel drive. And see, I don't know how many wheels are driving on this one when it doesn't have all-wheel drive engaged. But look at the smoke <laughs> billowing off of this thing. It's fantastic. It's absolutely beautiful. He's only got three gears. He's got three speeds on this one. So it's either slow... Not so slow, or... Actually, I, I, I'm guessing, really, that the actual speeds on this one are very slow, slow, or a bit more than slow. I, I don't think you've got, kind of, uh, super speed or anything like that. You, you, you don't have anything that is going to be more than just a crawl. And it was pointed out that these types of machines that you see running around on this map seem to... would seem to sort of be... not out of place pulling Scud missiles around. And yes, I absolutely agree, and a lot of things that have made their way into Russian agriculture and logging uh, did start out with Russian military, but the Russians are not the sort of people to let things go to waste, and realising that they've got these awesome machines that do a fantastic job, they've just sort of been repurposed, so... Um, like the Kirovitz tractor, which is now the mainstay... Well, it was. I don't know about anymore, but it used to be for quite a long time. It was like the mainstay machine for Russian agriculture. Then started out life as a military machine, and it, it moved on from there. I think I've got that right. Obviously, point out if I've got that wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was that way around. If it wasn't, it's the other way around. But the military and agricultural... Um, military, agricultural and forestry uses in Russia do tend to be quite interchangeable. If, if it's good enough for one, it's good enough for the others. And that's something I quite admire, actually. I mean, I'm not the sort of person that likes to let things go to waste too much, and I really do love that. And, of course, in Siberia, where this is set, it's extremely harsh conditions. Very, very cold, and as you can see from the landscape, it's not very forgiving, is it? And if you want to do anything, you kind of got to take it with you. So that's the whole point of this, is you need a machine that is not going to just give up at the first sign of hardship. This thing isn't going to give up at hardship. This is just going to plow right on through hardship and take it up straight on to the next level. If you take this one towards impossible rather than hardship, then it might, you know, have to think about it for a bit, but it'd probably still keep on going right the way through it. It's just an awesome... I mean, look at this. It's, it's barely even slowed down. I've been in third gear the whole time. Diff lock always on. I mean, once we get this one loaded up with a load of logs, I imagine it's going to slow it down a little bit. But even then, looking at the way that this is just ploughing over everything, I don't think a load of logs is going to slow it down a huge amount. I think that the it's it's just going to keep going without any problems. This is fantastic. Let's come round round here. I'm hoping that we have enough fuel to get all the way back to the garage. And right, we want to go up this. Oh, I've um, reached the end of my marked out track, so I'm not quite sure where I'm supposed to go next, as I don't remember. Okay, so we want to go here, and then up to there, and then it comes on round this way, 
and then out there and that takes us out onto this big plane which we then want to go sort of across to here and that takes us up onto this road where we've been previously so we should be able to get up there before the end of this episode i'm hoping and then in our next episode we will get this one kitted out with something that can carry logs at least i'm hoping we can I re i'm gonna be really disappointed if this one doesn't have an option for taking logs with it and then we can use it and hopefully deliver our first load of logs we've at least managed to uncover everything we wanted to uncover on the map today taking a little bit more damage but we'll repair that as soon as we get back to the garage probably going to take a couple of more points of damage at some point so far i've not seen anything that i think is going to slow this one down when he's loaded up with a massive load of logs i think it's going to just carry right on as though there's nothing there right we're moving into this open area i want to have a look at see what's all over here what kind of things we've got is it going to be like the other one where it was kind of boggy or is it going to be less in a way of bogs and is there's there's some mud around oh actually there's quite a lot of mud in places and then some of it's not quite so bad this is the area that i was thinking about isn't it i mean we got we got small trees sort of dotted around here yes this is the one and i've reached the end of the mark track so we should just be able to go through here is whether or not we can stay on this bridge and get all the way across this is going to be the next thing will the bridge hold us up don't fall off don't no 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 okay keep going keep going um although now actually i'm kind of curious what's going to happen if we fall off who wants me to fall off i know you do i know i know you want me to fall off i i can hear it now i can already hear you saying to the screen go on frith do it just fall off you can reset this machine anywhere on the map anyway, so it's not really going to matter. You can reset it after you've done this. We want to see you fall off. Okay. Okay. I've, I've heard your pleas. I'm going to do it. Now, what's the best sort of way to look at this? I think if we go about here, we'll try it. Here we go. We're going to fall off. I'm going to go that way so it rolls away from me. And boom. Oh, the damage. That was instant, just destroyed it. Fantastic. Okay, I am really loving this game. I am absolutely loving this. So, there is our poor vehicle. We're going to get that one down to the garage now. That's all i got time for today. I'm hoping to get you another episode of this out tomorrow. So, we will get this one hit, fitted up with something that will take logs. And we will start moving some logs with it from a log point back to the actual lumber mill if you enjoyed this episode then please head down below and give us a like and if you really enjoyed it then please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome but until next time thank you very much for watching this is frithgar bye and see you later